So, folks, it looks like Jill Stein, the leader of the Green Party presidential ticket, is getting some leeway thanks to the Democrats' endless aiding of this genocide in Israel. And it's making a lot of attention. So here's an article. This is from Reuters saying some Muslim Americans are moving to Jill Stein in potential blow to Kamala Harris. This is from September 19th of this year. And it's stating that some Arab Americans and Muslim voters angry at U.S. support for Israel's offensive in Gaza are shunning Democrat Kamala Harris in the presidential race to back third party candidate Jill Stein in numbers that could deny Harris victories in battleground states that will decide that will be decided in the November 5th election. A late August poll conducted by the Council on American Islamic Relations advocacy group showed that in Michigan, large home to uh, Arab American community, 40% of Muslim voters backed the Green Party Stein. Republican candidate Donald Trump got 18% with Harris, who is President Joe Biden's vice president, trailing at 12%. The poll conducted by text message more than two weeks ago before the Harris-Trump September 10th debate showed Harris leading Trump 29.4% to 11.2% uh, with 34% favoring third-party candidates, including Stein, at 29.1%. Harris was the leading pick of Muslim voters in Georgia and Pennsylvania, while Trump prevailed in Nevada with 27%, just ahead of Harris, 26%. According to CARE poll, C-A-I-R poll, of 1,155 Muslim voters nationwide. All are battleground states that have swung on narrow margins in recent elections. The Green Party is on the most state ballots, including all battleground states, that could decide the election, except for Georgia and Nevada, where the party is suing not to be, suing to be included. Stein also leads Harris among Muslims in Arizona and Wisconsin, battleground states with sizable Muslim populations where Biden defeated Trump in 2020 by slim margins. Biden won the 2020 Muslim vote, cited in various exit polls with 64% to 84% of their support, but Muslim backing of, backing of Democrats has fallen sharply since Israel's nearly long year-long action in Gaza. So there's charting there. There's obviously the key battleground states that really determine the outcomes of these elections. If you live along, like, say, California or New York City or, um, you know, even places like uh, Louisiana, you kind of already know what's going to be sided towards. Like, if you're a Republican in California, you know it's going to be a blue state. You know it's going to be a blue victory. If you're a Democrat in Louisiana or any of the red states, you know it's going to be a red state. But these are the real opportunities, and this is why you know these states are so important for our campaigns, and this is where Hillary Clinton completely fell on her face when it came to 2016 because she didn't offer anything to the swing states. She didn't even bother to step foot in there uh, to these potential battleground victories that could have got her campaign to win. Um, but she didn't do that. So there's, you know, the Harris, Trump, and Stein, and there's a lot. This is this is going to be a fierce competition because now we're actually seeing the potential of these third party candidates sweeping victory because of the heinous act of the duopoly and their endless regime wars overseas. How we're aiding so much war in Ukraine and now with the genocide in Israel that's going into Lebanon, how we're paying both sides to play in these war games and not doing anything for the majority of the country that's suffering right now because of this high inflation, cost of living. Um, you know, it's really just crushing our empire. And they're seeing a potential that people like Jill Stein and even in some cases the libertarian candidate which is questionable he's a he's a bit of a nutcase can take this opportunity to sweep in and actually make a huge change in these electoral polls in these battleground states and because of that because third parties are actually getting a bit of headway from the failures of the Democratic Party the Democratic Party 
had to release this attack ad on Jill Stein. Now, let's not forget that this is, you know, typical Democrat fashion, because you may remember that throughout Russiagate, during that debacle, that faux pas conspiracy that was just completely fabricated by Hillary Clinton's campaign and the FBI, and it really just came inconclusive when they did the Mueller report reading. It was just absolutely a made-up conspiracy so they can undermine the democratic process in America so they can undermine Trump, even though Hillary Clinton told Trump to run in the presidential campaign in 2016. And they used to go to each other's weddings and they were best friends and so on and so forth. Because of the fact that the establishment found Trump so awful, they had to conspire to lie to people. In the midst of that, Jill Stein was called an agent of Russia because she attended a gathering. She t attended some sort of, uh, I think it was a fundraiser campaign where there happened to be some Russian dignitaries at her table. Does that mean she's fully a Russian agent? No, because if you go to these events, especially being a politician or a political candidate, you go to events that have these dignitaries, have these people in attendance, and you kind of have to interact with those people. You have to interact with people that are outside, outside your purview of politics. That's why it was so interesting that in, in my entire lifetime that Donald Trump was the only presidential person that I'm aware of to actually shake hands with Kim Jong-un and have a discussion on a peace negotiation. Nowhere have I seen that in my lifetime from any president or prime minister or any leader so willing to sit down to actually have a negotiation for peace. And that's one of the reasons why the establishment hates a guy like Donald Trump that came up with Russia Gate. And here's now because Jill Stein is getting momentum in these battleground states in 2024 because of the genocide. Here's the attack ad that they came out with. Jill Stein, Green Party candidate for president. So why are Trump's close allies helping her? Stein was key to Trump's 2016 wins in battleground states. She's not sorry she helped Trump win. That's why a vote for Stein is really a vote for Trump. Oh, Jill my Stein, God. I like her very much. You know why? She takes 100% from them. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. This is literally the dumb, idiotic propaganda mainstream trope they hear constantly this is a, it, it doesn't even matter if it's jill stein this is what they've always said about third parties this is what this is what they always said about choosing a candidate that best represents them rather than choosing the lesser evil oh if you do that then so and so is going to get the votes you know if you actually think about it and decide for yourself then oh my god the evil guy is going to get votes and he's going to win. So you have to, you have to vote my way. While they're saying that they're trying to defend democracy. And if this was an actual democracy, which it isn't, it's not even a constitutional republic to use that argument. If this is actually a representative constitutional republic, a representative democracy, then... Ads like this attacking a third party candidate because it might sway votes towards Donald Trump would laugh in front of their face. This this would blow back to the face. This is the moment when in a cartoon, if uh if the if a guy was holding a gun, the barrel would be facing right back to their face on how stupid this is. But because we live in a duopoly. Because it's not democracy, you live in an oligarchy where none of this even matters to begin with. They've already hand-chosen what candidate's going to win, what policies are going to inflict, and you're just going to have to deal with it and go pound sand. You don't live in a democratic republic. You don't live in a constitutional republic. They're against the Constitution. And they're doing stupid ads like this. And you get the dumb followers of 
the DNC and liberal media that go around saying, eh, vote for Jill Stein is a vote for Trump. Which, coming from a Canadian who is fortunate to have options, even though most recently the uh, the NDP and the liberal coalition and just the corruptedness of that and how they're backing each other because Pierre Polyev's, uh you know, pub, uh, populist policies may inflict against the world agenda. At least we have the value and opportunity to have various options. And you don't hear many Canadians going around saying, hey, if you vote for the Green Party of Canada, that's a win for Trudeau. Hey, if you vote for Bloc Quebecois, that's that's a win for the Conservatives. Like, we don't do that in Canada. We don't do that in Canada. Because we know how absurd that is. We know how absurd that is. But America, because they don't allow third-party candidates, they don't allow second-party candidates, because let's face it, Democrat or Republican, they do the same exact thing. They're brought to you by the same lobby groups. They're going to push the same policies that... No matter who's in office, because we live in a totalitarian globalist regime and no one's fighting against that. Just saying that Jill Stein is going to sway votes to Trump is just the most absurd thing imaginable. That's what dumb people would say. That's what dumb people that don't know a damn thing about politics would say. That's what dumb people who don't understand basic civics which sadly they don't even teach civics anymore really in schools anymore i wonder why that is that's what dumb people would say that oh you vote for jill stein that's gonna that's gonna let trump be victorious again we're gonna have trump again you want that you want to be a trumper Ugh. Just vote blue no matter who. It's all good. Vote blue no matter who. We're saving democracy by me telling you who to vote for. Literally shows how, it literally, it's so absolutely stupid. Let's hear, hear it again. Jill Stein, Green Party candidate for president. So why are Trump's close allies helping her? Stein was key to Trump's 2016 wins in battleground states. She's not sorry she helped Trump win. That's why a vote for Stein is really a vote for Trump. Jill Stein, I like her very much. You know why? She takes 100% from them. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this mess. And the thing that would also fix this that nobody has mentioned, not even Hillary Clinton, even though she won the popular vote, and I'm surprised she didn't mention this, is maybe this would be a good time to have the discussion on the Electoral College, which I know is a hard subject. I know people are fiercely competitive when it comes to whether or not the Electoral College is good or bad or evil or not or what it actually represents. But when it comes down to stuff like this, when it comes to deciding who who you're going to vote for, when it comes to actually having the opportunity for people to have participation in this election because really your voice doesn't matter. Your voice doesn't matter. Whether you vote or not, it's just they're going to decide for you whether you have an electoral college or not. But if you give that opportunity to individuals, allow them to have a voice regardless of where they come from, this message, this fear-mongering, that somehow choosing a candidate that best represents you is going to sway in the other direction and is going to destroy the country would never come to be. And people like Hillary Clinton, who did win the popular vote, could actually win the electoral process. But because we live in the electoral college, the winner of the popular vote doesn't actually win presidency. That does not make sense to me. That does not make sense to me. It also doesn't make sense to me that when you have large populations in Texas, for example, or Wisconsin or Seattle or uh, New York or California, and I, I know people will say, well, I don't want to give my votes to the coastal elites, those libtards out there. Their votes don't, don't matter either. 
Their votes don't matter either. You know who's to sign your policies? International henchmen. They don't even live in the coasts. They don't live anywhere in America. They have mansions all over the place. That's who's to sign your democracy right now. And right now we need to find opportunities to get that away from them. So what if it goes to a coastal elite surfer in California or an uptight broad in New York? You give the votes back to the people. You give them the opportunity to actually have a full outcome of how their country should run. Which is why I also support ranked choice voting. It works in Maine. It works in other areas that they have implemented this. And it makes proper sense so that people have a better understanding, a better opportunity to decide what's best for their country. But... The current system, the current model we have right now that, oh, it's the best thing ever because now you get, you know, more votes for rural areas. Well, rural areas don't really get the vote either. And the, the, the reason that they have more congressmen in places like Wyoming than they do in Texas, even though Texas has a higher population, is because it's corrupted. They're putting more congressmen in places like Wyoming, which has little population than Texas, so that they can get more control. The government has more control over you. You don't get a say in any of it. You don't get a say in the electoral college process. And that's why they have to fear monger people by saying your vote doesn't matter. If you vote for Jill Stein, it doesn't matter. It's going to go towards Trump. So vote for Kamala Harris, deal with genocide, and shut the hell up. In which case, what part of the American freedom dream does that come from what part what part of democracy is is that so good that we should be defending what what, what where's the democratic value in that where's the constitutional public value of stuff like this just absolutely disgusting really just disgusting and here's now they're getting the mainstream media also involved in this, this is an axios article from September 27th saying how Jill Stein could derail Democrats again. So because Muslim Americans are taking a chance with a third party candidate because they feel like they're being betrayed by the Democrats by openly advancing warfare on these nations, sending their tax dollars to kill a lot of their brothers and sisters in different territories, in this horrific genocide, this cleansing of people, they now have to double down and scold voters, not the party, not the military industrial complex, not take a second to see what they're doing to cause this, but they're going to scold you, the voter, by saying that you, looking at this carefully, having critical thought and voting your conscience is going to ruin the country. That how dare you take a second to look at Jill Stein or any third-party candidate outside the duopoly because that's a victory for Trump. It's such garbage rhetoric. It's such garbage rhetoric. And if I could figure it out, uh, shoestring budget podcaster dumbass like me in Canada can figure that out then anyone can. But don't fall into that stupid, disillusioned trap, that propaganda that you only have two options, really just one option. It's a duopoly. It's an oligarchy. There is no democracy. There is no constitutional republic. They're trying to diminish the Constitution in the process of doing this. Don't fall into that trap. Because this clearly shows that people do have leverage that when an opportunity does strike people have that leverage and the status quo the duopoly the democrats and republicans are fearful of this because let's not forget republicans are also signed with kamala harris they don't mention that in the article they don't mention that dick cheney and george w bush are endorsing kamala harris is that not concerning is that not you know something to be, have an advertisement for 
the two well-known war criminals that should be prosecuted and locked away in Gitmo are supporting Kamala Harris? And you think that's going to be good for the country? But kudos to Jill Stein. Kudos for Jill Stein. There's a lot, you know, criticisms on her too, but when the opportunity strikes, you know, she's at least getting more leverage than she would have back in the day. They used to lock her up during the debates. They arrested her. They kept her in chains so she wouldn't partake in the debates because having her speak would challenge and make people wake up and realize that you do not have a voice in the election process. All this is really theatrics without understanding third parties' role in this, without understanding that you live in a duopoly where they don't want you to have options. And this is how they're trying to undermine people once again.